Since Friday, there's been a lot of rhetoric about controlling the sale of assault weapons and high-volume magazines, even from some longtime NRA stalwarts. But is that momentum going to fade in time? Joining me now is Democratic Senator from Connecticut, Richard Blumenthal. Senator, thank you very much. And my condolences to you and all the people of Connecticut and what you've all thank experienced you. as you've been through these last days, uh, unimaginable. But It has you know, been we see uh, three days I don't want to relive. I'm sure. Thank you. Uh, Thank we've you. seen some of your colleagues. I interviewed uh, Senator Manchin yesterday, and this is, you know, as you know better than anyone, Senator Manchin had done a campaign commercial uh, which, you know, bragged about his gun background in the campaign commercial where he showed his, his long gun and was out taking target practice. So no one has been more identified in the Senate with the NRA than he. Uh, do you think that he and others will now be willing to look at the assault weapon ban, for instance, that Senator Feinstein has proposed and that now the White House has endorsed today? And I'm supporting that proposal along with the restrictions on high capacity magazines, other measures that we can take to prevent gun violence. I think Senator Manchin's step, along with Senator Warner's, Senator Reid's statements on this subject mark a real shift, almost a tectonic change in the political landscape here. And it is an extraordinary moment where watching these senators who are revisiting their past positions is really an inspiring act of leadership, I think. Can't the White House do more even on its own? And, and here we have a situation where it would not have helped in this case, granted, this, these guns were legally purchased by Nancy Lanza, Adam Lanza's wife, uh, mother, rather. But uh, the bottom line is that 40% of guns are sold without a background check in this country. That's right, because of loopholes, very good point. About 60% are involving background checks, but 40% do not. And yes, I do think the White House will act with determination. The president spoke very strongly and eloquently on this topic in the vigil on Sunday in Newtown when he visited with the families. And the specifics obviously have not been forthcoming, but the country wants it. Everywhere I go, Newtown, among the law enforcement community, my former colleagues as attorney general, of the state of Connecticut, I hear again and again and again, we have to do something. And I think that the president will respond with leadership. I certainly hope he will. And I hope the country remains focused on this issue as well, because that's what it will take for people to remain focused on the tragedy and also the need to prevent such tragedies in the future. And we should, we should also say that as the former Attorney General, your former colleagues, all the law enforcement officials, the first responders, to say nothing of the heroism of the teachers, um, just the spirit and the courage, the guts of the people of that community and that state are just uh, extraordinary. Well, I really appreciate that. You know, there was tremendous evil in Newtown beginning Friday, but there was also heroism on the part of the First responders, as you said, the SWAT team members who actually stormed in the building and prevented many deaths because the shooter took his own life when he knew that they were there. The principal, the teachers who literally threw themselves at that danger and perished as a result. And of course, the whole community which has come together, it's a quintessential New England community, quintessential American community and the bonds that bring people together. Everybody knows everyone else virtually. And that's a good thing because it means that they come together, but also everybody knew, virtually everybody knew the children involved too. So there were some extraordinary moments of emotion and the uh, kinds of sights and sounds I think will remain with me forever. It's really haunting indeed. Senator Richard Blumenthal, thank you very much. Thanks thank for you. being with us.